and welcome to Dream Speaks. And in this BNF bite sized style video, I'll be covering electrolyte imbalances. So, the symptoms of electrolyte imbalances, risk factors, as well as some specific examples. This has been a highly requested video, so I do hope that you like it. And if you do, why not hit that like button? Share with whoever else you think may benefit from this video. Do also hit that subscribe button as well as the little notification bell so that you are the first to know when new videos are released. So there can be a number of reasons why someone's electrolytes are imbalanced. Most often it is due to a loss of fluids through prolonged vomiting or diarrhea. And if a patient is experiencing a bout of vomiting or diarrhea, a key counselling point is to make sure the patient keeps hydrated. So either with water or squash or all rehydration sachets if the individual has any signs of dehydration. Electrolyte imbalance could be due to certain conditions such as renal disease, thyroid disorders, traumas such as burns or alcohol use disorders to name a few examples. Or it could be due to certain medications such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, lithium, potassium sparring diuretics, ACE inhibitors or um, even thiazide diuretics as well. So in terms of symptoms of electrolyte imbalance, imbalances, it can vary depending on the electrolyte, but some common symptoms can include fatigue, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea or constipation, abdominal pain, muscle cramping and confusion. So let's focus on specific electrolytes, starting off with calcium. Um, too much is termed hypercalcemia, too low is hypocalcemia. As a general rule of thumb, remember hyper is high and hypo is low. Um, I hope you liked that little rendition. Um, why do we need calcium? Well, it's for strong bones and teeth, of course, as those yoga adverts love to tell us. It's also vital for stabilizing blood pressure um, and for a normal uh, plasma calcium range is 2.2 to 2.6 millimoles per liter. So with hypocalcemia, it can be caused by vitamin D deficiency. So calcium and vitamin D really go um, hand in hand. It could also be due to hypoparathyroidism or malabsorption. Hypercalcemia can be caused by hyperparathyroidism, excessive use of vitamin D or calcium supplements, and as a result of renal disease. Moving on to magnesium, think M for magnesium, M for muscle contraction. So magnesium regulates muscle and nerve function as well as blood pressure. It also ensures, ensures the parathyroid glands work in the way that they should. So hypomagnesemia can be caused by alcohol misuse, malabsorption, malnutrition, a lot of M's going on here, um, excessive sweating, whilst hypermagnesemia can affect those with Addison's disease and end-stage renal disease. Focusing on phosphorus, so phosphorus is also required for the formation of bones and teeth. So hypophosphatemia can be due to vitamin D deficiency, overactive parathyroid glands, um, severe burns, whilst hyperphosphatemia can be due to low calcium levels, underactive parathyroid glands and chronic kidney disease. Now looking at potassium. So potassium is required in regulating our heart function. It's also involved in maintaining nerves and muscles. So normal plasma potassium level is 4.5 millimoles per litre and hypokalemia, so low potassium levels, can be due to severe vomiting, diarrhea, de dehydration or eating disorders and thiazide diuretics. So in order to get the balance right regarding potassium levels in a patient taking a diuretic, they can be prescribed a potassium sparring diuretic in combination with a thiazide or a loop diuretic to prevent hypokalemia. Hyperkalemia can be a result of um, conditions such as diabetic ketoacidosis, renal failure or adrenal insufficiency. It can also be a side effect of medications such as ACE inhibitors, particularly in those with impaired renal function. And if a patient is taking an ACE inhibitor um, or an angiotensin receptor 2 antagonist, an ARB, as well as a potassium sparring diuretic, uh, it can result in severe hyperkalemia. 
So examples of potassium sparring diuretics are spironolactone, amylaride, triamterene, and they work by blocking the sodium potassium exchange pump in the distal convoluted tubule. So if a patient is taking a potassium sparring diuretic as well as potassium supplements, it will increase their risk of hyperkalemia. Are you looking for a question bank which tells you whether you've got an answer right or wrong straight away that covers every chapter in the BNF plus OTC type scenarios? Well, if your answer is yes, then make sure to check out Clinical Quizzical. The link is in the description box below. I will also include a link to a demonstration video if you're still wondering whether Clinical Quizzical is for you. So do make sure to go and check that out. And sodium. So normal plasma sodium level is 142 millimoles per litre and sodium is required to maintain fluid balance. It helps transmit nerve impulses and regulates muscle contraction. Hyponatremia can be caused by vomiting, diarrhea, burns, poor nutrition, alcohol misuse or overhydration or as a result of liver, um, kidney or heart failure. It has also been associated with all types of antidepressants, but has been reported more so with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs. So if a patient is on an SSRI and they experience drowsiness or confusion, then hyponatremia could be a reason why. Other medication that can disturb um, sodium levels is cyclophosphamide. So hyponatremia is a very rare side effect of cyclophosphamide. It has also been associated with the use of thiazide diuretics, so usually in the first couple of weeks of starting a thiazide diuretic. And thiazides act by inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions from the distal convoluted tubule. So with hypernatremia, it can be due to, um, as a result of inadequate water consumption or severe dehydration. In patients who are prescribed lithium, hypernatremia can be a result of lithium overdose. So I hope this video helps summarise those key causes of certain electrolyte imbalances. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, my Twitter and my Facebook for more. And until next time, have your revisings.